Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we are starting a brand new series on master data in SAP MM. As you know, master data plays a very crucial role in materials management and having a strong understanding of how to maintain it is necessary whether you are working as an end user or as a MM consultant. Master data is the building block of any SAP module and SAP MM is no exception. Without accurate and well-maintained master data, the entire procurement and inventory process can face challenges. That's why its knowledge is very important. This series will be your one-step guide to learning everything about master data in SAP MM. In today's video, we'll first talk about why master data is required, what all master data objects exist in SAP MM, and the significance of each of them. From here on, in the upcoming videos of this series, we'll dive into each master data in detail, covering both the end user perspective and the functional configuration side. You will not only learn how to work with master data, but also you will learn how to set it up in the system. So let's get started with today's topic that is introduction to master data in SAP MM. So to learn about the master data, first we need to ask this question that why master data is at all required in SAP. So to understand this, let's take an example. Let's say that your organization requires some laptops. So what you have to do, you have to basically place purchase order for this laptop on a particular vendor. So what this purchase order will contain? This purchase order will basically contain three sections. One will be the vendor information, then the material information and the purchase order information. The vendor information will basically contain the information about the vendor. That is, what is the name of the vendor? What is the address of the vendor? What are the payment terms and other details? The material information will contain the details of the material. That is what material you are purchasing and what all specifications are there for that material. That is what is the screen size, the RAM, hard disk capacity, processor, accessories, etc. These informations also you will have to enter in your purchase order. And then finally you will enter the purchase order information that is what is the unit price, how much quantity you are purchasing and what all other terms and conditions are there for that purchase order. So you see you have to enter all this information in your purchase order, send it to your vendor. Based on these informations only vendor will supply you the material that is laptop in this case. Now let's say that you created a purchase order by entering everything manually in the PO. That is you enter the vendor information manually, you enter the material information also manually and you enter the PO information also. And after you prepared this purchase order, you sent it to the vendor and then vendor supplied you the material and that cycle was completed. Now let's imagine that another plant of your organization requires the same laptops. So what they have to do again they have to create a purchase order and again this purchase order will have to contain all that information and let's say that this time the plant is purchasing from an another vendor you can see here this time the vendor is different so the vendor address will also be different the payment terms might be different and other details of the vendor will be different. The material is same, you have same laptop, you have same screen size, RAM, hard disk capacity, processor. But you see this time this person forgot to enter the accessories in this purchase order. He was preparing the purchase order, he was entering all the information manually. While entering the specifications of the laptop, he forgot to mention that the accessories are also required against this laptop. And he placed the order with these PO informations. Now you see. In both these purchase order, you had to enter similar informations. You had to enter information about the vendor, about the material and about the purchase order, unit price, quantity and terms and conditions. And every time when a user enters this information, it is possible that some information is missed out by the person and it is also possible that the same material is purchased at a higher price. Okay, because you see when this person was creating this purchase order, this person did not have any option to search for the previous purchase order because this was also created manually. There was no entity in the system through which this purchase order could be searched. So this person asked the vendor to supply the material and whatever price was quoted by the vendor, this person had to enter in the purchase order. So you see you have these two purchase orders and basically we have these four limitations when we are dealing with these informations and we are entering these informations manually in the system. 
what are these limitations first is you have lack of standardization that is you do not have standard specifications entered in your system so every time a person is entering the information he has to make sure that he is entering the information correctly whatever specification the person is entering he has to enter the standard information and it is totally up to the end user that what all informations are being entered so you do not have standard data available in your system in this particular case then second thing is you have repetition of job you can see every time the user has to enter all these data manually so earlier user entered these data about the laptop again user has to enter all this data the third problem is that you have a difficulty to check the historical data as i told you because you do not have any entity to search this purchase order so this person whenever he is creating a purchase order for laptop he will not be able to find the details of this purchase order he will have to go through all the purchase orders which have been placed by your organization and then find out wherever laptop is mentioned what all screen size ram hard disk capacity processor etc is mentioned and from there he'll have to see what all prices were there in the previous purchase orders so the third problem is difficult to check the historical data and the last problem is inability to maintain the inventory if you do not have any entity which stores the information of the material then you cannot have inventory in your plant because the inventory can only be shown against an entity which will contain the information of that material so unless and until you have that entity which contains the information of the material you cannot maintain inventory so you can see these are the four problems which you will face if you do not have any entity which stores the information of your material or your vendor so what can be done to deal with these issues so in sap you have something called as master data okay so let's understand the concept of master data and the transaction data so whenever you create any transactional document in sap it will always contain a combination of two things one is the master data and another one is the transaction data okay in this case you see you will have to create certain entities which will store the information of the vendor and the material and to achieve this in sap what you will have to create is master data for both these entities that is for a vendor and a material you will have to create master data which will basically act as a container which will contain these informations okay so whenever you want to enter the data you only have to enter the master of that particular material or vendor system will take everything which is saved in the master data and will populate in your particular purchasing document that is purchase order in the current case okay so you can see a master data is basically the building block in your system which you can use to build your transactions okay so whenever you have to create a purchase order you will have to use these master data and then it will solve all your issues which we discussed earlier that is you will have standard data in your system you will not be supposed to repeat your activities you simply have to enter that master data and every information will be saved and most importantly you will be able to search the transactional documents which were posted earlier that is if you have a material master or a vendor master you can search for previous purchase orders which have been placed against that material or that vendor okay so that is the most important thing that you get through this master data and that is indexing that is you can search for the documents which have been created in the system against that master data and finally in case of material you can only maintain inventory if you have material master available in the system without material master inventory management is not possible so you can see these two information that is the vendor information and the material information is stored in something called as master data and this information that is the po information that is the unit price quantity terms and condition this is called transaction data okay so this data will change in every document 
whenever you create a purchase order you may have different transaction data but you will have the same master data in all those purchase orders so master data is something which is static that is which once created will not be changed or will rarely be changed and transaction data is something which will depend on each transaction document so whenever you create a purchase order you will enter a vendor master you will enter a material master and then you will enter your transaction data and these two combined together will basically create your purchase order okay so i hope that you've understood this concept of master data and transaction data a master data will rarely be changed you will create this once and then you will keep on using it in every purchasing document transaction data is something which will depend on every case that is whatever purchasing document you are creating it will have its own transaction data and both these data are not created through the configuration route an end user only will be creating a master data and a transaction data but in the case of master data that end user will be basically from the core group that is in your organization certain people will be earmarked for maintaining the master data they will be responsible for maintaining all kind of master data in your organization and they will only maintain the master data transaction data will be done by each user who is basically working in sap ml okay so any person who is creating the purchase order may not create the master data he will only enter the master data in the purchase order and then enter other informations like quantity unit price terms and condition but you will have certain core group members in your organization which will basically work as master data maintenance people they will basically be responsible for maintaining the master data but you have to understand that both these data master data and transaction data are done on application side that is these are not done through the configuration route but the people who will be maintaining this master data and transaction data will be different okay a master data will be maintained by core group people transaction data will be entered by every mm user as applicable okay so you can see here you have these two masters mentioned here the vendor information will save in the vendor master and the material information we will save in the material master and basically we will be assigning something called as codes to these information that is you will have a vendor code and a material code available with you you only have to enter these codes in your purchase order every information of these entities will be auto populated or will be defaulted from their masters so if you enter a vendor code in the purchase order the vendor information will be defaulted in your purchase order if you enter a material code in your purchase order the information of the material code will be defaulted in your purchase order and once you enter these two master data then you will enter the transaction data that is the quantity unit price terms and conditions and other details and then you will be able to create your purchase order okay so this concept of master data is there in every sap module now let's understand the various type of master data which are available in sap mm so as we discussed earlier we have material master and vendor master then we have service master as we have discussed in our service procurement video that you can procure services also through sap mm and there you can enter your service master that is you will enter the information about the services that are to be performed by the vendor and you will store that information in something called as a service master then you have purchasing info record now what is a purchasing info record basically this is a combination of material master vendor master and the pricing conditions that is you will create a master data in sap telling that this material will be purchased from this vendor at this price okay so basically you will combine material master vendor master and the prices in something called as purchasing info record then you have source list basically this master data specifies the allowed sources of a material for a certain plant within a predefined period that is basically you will be maintaining a list of vendors which will be supplying you a particular material and based on that master list you will be preparing your purchase requisition and purchase order then you have something called as quota arrangement now this master data type specifies the proportion of a material that can be procured from a particular vendor so here what we will do we will combine multiple vendors and we will assign quotas for each vendor for supply of a particular material and based on that quota your required quantity will be distributed among multiple vendors okay 
then finally you have this condition master so basically the prices that are quoted by the vendor we can also maintain those prices in a particular master data and that is the condition master we will discuss this condition master when we discuss the pricing procedure in sap mm there we'll see how you can maintain condition records and how you can maintain the master data of your conditions based on multiple factors okay so in sap mm majorly you have these seven masters that is material master vendor master service master purchasing info record source list quota arrangement and condition master we learned about all these master data in our upcoming videos now let's understand what is the meaning of organizational elements in master data now as we have already seen in the organizational structure in sap mm video that in sap mm you have these major five elements in the organization structure now whenever you will be entering information against any master data in sap mm you will be entering that information on various levels that is let's say that some information is applicable to the whole organization then that data you will maintain at the client level then some information will be specific to company code or plant or storage location or purchase organization so those data you will enter at these specific levels let's say that you are maintaining your material master then the material specification will be entered at the client level because that material specification will be standard for the whole organization but the purchasing data will be applicable at plant level each plant will have its own purchasing conditions like it will have a particular purchasing group or it will have a particular purchasing value keys so all those informations which are pertaining to the purchasing part will be entered at the plant level then every storage location in a particular plant will have its own storage location data so for storage of that material you will have to maintain data at the storage location level then if we talk about the vendor then the vendor's information that is the vendor name address and other contact details you will maintain at the client level but for posting financial documents against that vendor you will have to maintain data at the company code level and to prepare purchase order for that particular vendor you will have to enter the purchasing data at the purchasing organization level so you can see every organization structure element is attached to your master data whenever you will be maintaining the master data system will ask you to enter the corresponding organizational element and then only you will be able to maintain that data we'll see all these in details in our upcoming videos but you have to understand that you have an organization structure in sap mm and when you maintain your master data you will have to maintain that master data against each element of that organization structure as applicable for that particular master data so you can see at client level you maintain data for material and vendor for company code and purchase organization you maintain data for any vendor and for plant and storage location you maintain data for the material in case of vendor also you can maintain data at plant level we'll discuss when we discuss about the vendor master but majorly you maintain these master data on these particular levels which are shown on the screen okay so in this way we have understood what is the meaning of master data in sap mm and why it is required in our subsequent videos we'll learn about each of these master data and in this series i will cover the detail of every master data from the end user perspective and from the configuration side also so i hope that you have understood this concept of master data in sap mm and i hope that you have liked this video if you like my videos then please like and subscribe to my channel your likes and subscriptions really motivate me to create more content in our next video we'll learn about the material master that how you can maintain a material master and what all things you have to consider from an end user perspective while maintaining the material master so see you in the next video till then thank you so much for supporting me thanks a lot